Okay, then basically you get a large part of this is going to be extending the same stuff we've been seeing for a few lectures already for three coins, just going up to four coins and making the, the relevant changes. Are, are we on, Brian? Okay. So the first thing, of course, in the, the model is spinner, which is sort of a cover page. I would like to see the Xerox of this page in the page as well. Um, then it says, probability distribution of random variable x where x is the result of spinning the spin. Well, really quickly, what does it mean to create a probability distribution? It means having the x's, which in the case of spinning the spinner goes from 0 to 9, and the p of x's, which is 1 out of 10, or 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Everything is 0.1, with, of course, a grand total of 1. That's, that's all you've got to write down for item number 2. Item number 3 says, change changes into a picture. The relevant picture would be how many zeros are there? Ones, twos, three, four, fives, up to nines. Well, the p of x would be always at one out of ten, point one. So it'd be one out of ten, one out of ten, one out of ten. So basically, a, a picture that looks something like this would be the proper answer for item number three. Item number four, come up with the e of x for this situation. Now we did this already, but let's do it again. When you when you're spinning the spinner millions of times, what do you expect to happen on the average? What's the e of x by common sense? quickly, because we only have a minute, and I'd like to have an answer quickly. Well, I'll answer it myself. If you, since the numbers run between 0 and 9, the average got to be 4.5, right in the middle. So the E of x or the mu should come out to 4.5 by so-called common sense. But if you do it by the formula, you do this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this, you're also going to get exactly 4.5. Now, the next part says calculate the variance of the range, which we never did before. Calculate the variance. Well, how do you get the variance? Again, this is not binomial, so you can't use a shortcut. You've got to use this formula, where the x's are 0 through 9 successively. The mu is always 4.5. The p of x is always 1 out of 10. And after all is said and done, we did this since we did it already. Anybody recall the answer? Well, they said the standard deviation is 2.87, and 2.87 squared is 8.25. So the, the answer to this calculation for the sigma squared should be 8.25. Yes? Are we doing this all on Excel or can we write it? No, no, all this is done by hand calculation. Okay. You want to do it on Excel, you can, but it's really done. It's meant to be done by hand. You don't have to type it, just write it out. And finally, what's the standard deviation of this thing? Well, the square is the square root of 8.25, which is, according to your experience, as you should have verified earlier, is 2.87. Okay, number six says you actually do it. Do it, you know, with, I think, a thousand numbers. Make a pistol picture to make sure you correspond to a thousand numbers. Now, number eight, which I already assigned to you, is to calculate the p of x. Now we're switching gears. Now we're going to the binomial. Totally separate, another random, relevant for chapter five, but it's a different random situation. Now you're flipping four coins. What's the x is going to be? Zero, one, two, three, or four. What's the chance of getting all four heads in a row? Well, it's four choose zero, one half to the zero power, etc. Or a half times a half times a half times a half. Either way you look at it, it comes out to one out of 16. And likewise, you'll fill out the rest of that chart and come up with a bunch of numbers that add up to 100%, because if you did number six correctly, number eight correctly. So what's the other way of doing number six, according to the piece of paper? By the tree diagram. Remember, we had a tree diagram where you have heads, 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 and heads, 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 tails. We did that for three coins. You'll make another picture. Of and that's another way of proving the answer is one out of 16, because there's only one of them, namely H, 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 H. Make a spike diagram. Number 10, I asked you to do a couple of times ago, of doing it 8,000 times, the ran between, which the ran between 0 to 9. Repeat that four times, get a total. That, that's, a, that's a big one, but that's, I told you that before. And now, number 11, calculate the E of x by three different methods. We're flipping four coins. The first method is by the common sense or logic. When you're flipping four coins, you expect to get two heads and two tails. That's logic. Do it by the E of x method. Well, when you get the answer, you do this times this, this times this, this times this, and this times this, and this times this. You've got to come out to exactly two. And finally, can you do it by the shortcut NP formula? Yes, we're flipping coins. It's binomial. So what's the shortcut? Well, the N is four, and the chance of a head is a half. How much is N times P? Four times a half. The answer is two. So any way you look at it, the answer comes out to the case of E of X. It comes out to the case of four coins. comes out to two. And finally, the last thing which I asked you to do originally, but let's repeat it again. When you do the 8,000 flips of the coin, actually get the average by telling Excel to give you the average and make sure it comes out to something pretty close to two. And we'll stop right there.